in young, healthy people who are really sensitive to protein and are doing resistance training, okay, that's one thing. Maybe there's not a difference between plant and animal protein. But what about in an elderly cohort? And that was actually something that I had, I've been waiting for someone to kind of study this. And I still think there's some more studies to be done. But uh, Luke, Luke Van Loon's group did a, a study this year that I found that was really interesting where they did a, it was a 10 day controlled vegan diet and it was a crossover trial. So you did 10 days. Have you, have you seen this paper? Yeah, I've, I've yeah. seen it, but I might not know it as, in as much detail as you. The long story short here was that there was 35 or 34 adults. They were around 72 years old and they were healthy, active adults. So they were doing like 12,000 plus steps a day, but they weren't going through like, you know, res resistance training programs. So again, I think this was more representative of the typical 72 year old. And so every, every one of these participants got to do 10 days on the two different diets and they gave them 95% of their meals. So there was like 5% of their meals where they advised them on what snacks to kind of add in here and there, but otherwise all the food was provided. So they knew exactly what they were eating. And they, they were consuming about 1.2 to 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram. So it's not like they were jacking it up to a really high level where you run into that kind of issue or a rebuttal that some people might say, okay, at, at that level, plant protein is, is as good as animal protein. So they had it down at more, again, at this kind of a little bit higher than maybe what people consume in the general population. And they were looking at daily muscle protein synthesis. And this is the important point, and I want people to go and read this paper because this was funded by the beef industry. And that's not to say this was a bad study. I think Luke, I, I've said this on other podcasts, like Luke Van Loon is known to do some really great study designs and is, is from all reports, a really strong scientist. But I'm sure the, the Beef Checkoff program enjoyed that the hypothesis going into this based on their previous research, which was done on a single meal, looking at single meal muscle protein synthesis, was that the omnivorous diet would be more anabolic. And so they ran this trial and to their surprise, there was no, no significant differences in daily muscle protein synthesis in these 72 year olds between the omnivorous diet and the vegan diet. And at the end of the paper, they say, now the next question is in this cohort, if you were to carry that out and look at strength and look at muscle mass like those two studies you mentioned do we see this kind of play out and and find no significant effects at the, at, at at that kind of trial yeah and I, I would love to see that because i've spoken with like hamilton rochelle from from uh, who did the brazilian study and one of the problems they have with studying muscle and strength uh, changes or, or gains in elderly populations is getting them to consume that optimal level of protein of like 1.6 grams per kilogram or higher. So that is reassuring seeing those results at, you know, a lower level, but then carrying that out could also be further informative to see if there's differences there with muscle gains. And the, an interesting point that they made in the paper, because I thought about that too, and I thought, were they giving them a lot of protein isolates to get to 1.2, 1.3? And in fact, they didn't use any protein isolate in that study. So they used soy-based dairy alternatives. And they used some plant-based meats. And the again, you mentioned before there was that effect on fatigue yeah. in that other study. This this study didn't look at that, but they actually found they were measuring satiety, like satisfaction post meal. And they also looked at LDL, and LDL cholesterol was significantly lower on the on the vegan diet. And by the way, the omnivorous diet in this was not a standard Western diet. They did it according to the Dutch dietary guidelines. So they considered it a healthy omnivorous diet. It was high in fiber, not ultra processed. But the, the finding of, of appetite I thought was interesting because when the subjects were consuming the vegan diet, they reported significantly greater satiety post-meal. That's interesting. I mean, maybe some of the fiber or something of the sort. 
uh, perhaps. I mean, we do see a little bit of a little bit of weight loss in some of the trials on plant based meats, uh, which might in some ways be owing to the at least modest amount of fiber that they can contain. So interesting. So how do you how do you wrap all of that up when when someone says to you, OK, based on all of that, summarize it for me, does does the source of the protein that I'm consuming affect my adaptations that I get to exercise? I'd say long story short, no. Um, really, at the end of the day, what matters is the amount of protein. The source seems to play little, if any, role, provided that you're having some level of a variety. You know, if we were to repeat the same studies where you're getting all your protein from a single plant source, could you maybe make an argument that that might be suboptimal? Sure. But as long as you're having some level of variety and hitting around that range of, you know, 1.2 or so, that's pretty good. And of course, if you're looking to absolutely maximize muscle and strength, going higher to 1.6 is, is reasonable. But beyond that, it seems to be a um, no further benefit. The average person is starving their microbiome every single day and in turn, robbing themselves of their best health. Enter 38 Terra's Daily Microbiome Nutrition or DMN. What's DMN, you ask? Well, who better to explain than 38 Terra founder and gastroenterologist, Dr. Will Bolsowitz? Thanks, Simon. DMN is a daily prebiotic blend we created to nourish your gut microbes with exactly what they need to thrive. We used rigorously studied ingredients like actazin kiwi fruit powder and solenol resistant starch, both of which have been shown in clinical research to feed the beneficial bacteria, improve regularity, and support digestion and immune health. Of course, we've left out the sugar and the unnecessary fillers that you find in so many other products. And what you end up with is the most complete prebiotic that I know of on the market today. In fact, this is the product that I've always wanted for my patients. Support your gut health today in the most practical, science-backed way with DMN. Simply head to 38terra.com. That's the numbers 38tera.com and use the coupon code, the proof at checkout for 10% off. 